Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the ever-increasing most, Avery LR32 here, and continue, because I've been seeing you, destroying the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that subscribe button so we can keep on climbing higher and higher the 1K ladder, currently sitting at 1,114 subscribers. Thank you all so much for all the support. It really does mean a lot to me. I hope that you're having a fantastic day. So, with the now end of the team YCS in Las Vegas. Um, you guys, well, some of y'all had requested for me to do a floodgate tier list. Um, so I figured it would be fun to do that. Also, uh, I want to give a shout out to one of my subscribers, um, who I actually didn't realize had over 2000 subs and was subscribed to me, uh, Squiddy. He went to uh, team YCS Las Vegas and he either posted a deck profile of someone topping with Dark World or like he topped with Dark World, I'm not really sure. But Squiddy, if you're seeing this video, I saw that you're subscribed to me. So it made me squeal like a little girl with an Ultra Ball in her hands <laughs> and an Ultra Banana right behind me. And uh, yeah, so I really appreciate all the support from each and every one of you. And shout out to Squiddy for doing well at the YCS. So uh, let's go ahead and talk about some of these floodgates. I pulled this floodgate, off, or I pulled this floodgate. I pulled this tier list maker off of tier list maker because I don't know how the fuck to make one. So we're not going through all this. Like some of this stuff is banned. Some of this stuff isn't actually a fucking floodgate. So I want to talk about this one here uh, because this was mentioned in my comment section on my last tier list video and the ban played on. So ban played on is a continuous trap and it says that neither player can special summon monsters of a level that they have on the field and neither player can special summon monsters of the same rank of monsters that they already have on the field. So against Cash Tira, since pretty much all the monsters they play are level seven. Once they have one out, they can no longer special summon level sevens. And then if they have a rank seven exceed on the field, they can't summon any more rank seven exceeds. To me, this falls under situational because I would rather just play something like summon limit. You know, keep in mind that Cash Tira does have birth, which just lets them normal summon level sevens without tributing. This only stops special summoning. So they can just still normal summon or they can still special summon a rise heart and then use the effect to make it a level seven. So... I feel that it's just too situational. It's something that people have gone back and forth on for years. Um, I just feel like in this format, it's just not all that good. Um, let's go ahead and jump around a little bit. I don't know only. I don't know why only Flying C is on here. Um, flying C is going in the booty booty butt cheeks. Ain't nobody playing fucking Flying C. The thing is with all the C cards, they come in and out of the format because they're just really situational. But right now, like it's it's just bad. Actually, you know what? I'll. I'll, I'll up it at one. It, all the C cards are situational. Besides Max C, but that card ain't never coming the fuck back. <laughs> um, macro. Ma macro is decent. I feel like if you're not playing Cash Tira and you don't have a reliable way to take control of, like, let's say, a Shangri-La that's activated its effect to make an Arise Heart, then, yeah, you can play something like Macro or even Dimensional Fissure by extension. Um, I just feel like if you're going down that route, if you have something like Macro in your side... Which actually, yeah, we could just move it here to side. Well, no, we'll, we'll keep it at decent because I wouldn't really, I wouldn't really say it's a side deck material card because not every deck is gonna side deck it, right? Um, so it's like if you go against Kashira, it's like okay, well now you just have a wasted spot. So take that for what you will. I just don't think it's really the best card, especially with Kashira just being able to do it in the form of a fucking monster that anybody can play. Um, let's see, Gozen. Gozen is fucking amazing. Where's Rivalry at? Rivalry is fucking insane. Where's the TC Boo that I put down here? I know that there's a TC Boo because it was put in here like 10 freaking times. Uh, but, 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 we're going to look here very, very quick. Uh, I don't know where it is. Oh, here it is. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, so yeah, these three cards lead the charge in Floodgates. These cards are fucking bananas. Um, I'm going to actually put this down here in decent as well because these kind of all go together. Um, you know, we've seen some runic decks playing like three copies of all of these and like three messengers or like two to three copies of each and three messenger because it's just so disgusting. Like it's basically just another way to have mystic mind. Like if you have a goes in a rivalry up, you know, then the opponent can only have one attribute and one type of monster on the field at the same time. Plus messenger locks them out of attacking. You know, that's what was funny about my branded Eldritch deck that I came in 27th place with, which if you haven't seen the deck profile, go see it because just the video itself is a trip, even though the, the deck itself is kind of out of date. You know, I was doing the floodgate thing before floodgates were really a thing. Like we weren't playing messenger, but like we were maxing out on like, I think I was maxing out on Gozen Rivalry and TC Boo along with Skill Drain. Um, just because like in branded Eldritch, you didn't give a shit. And so like, I was just able to lock my opponent down with like 
goes in right i think at one point i had like a goes in a rivalry and a tc boo up and like my opponent can only have one monster the field at a time i think another time i had like rivalry and tc boo up uh with maybe a skill drain and my opponent just couldn't do anything and it's hilarious you know if you're trying to get the game to slow down to a crawl these cards are gonna have to be the cards that you play you know obviously they're matchup dependent like you wouldn't <laughs> you would not play rivalry against fucking cash tira because majority of their monsters are psychics you know fenrir is a psychic uh I think Scareclaw Cash Tier is a psychic. I'm Tier Element Cash Tier, I believe, is a psychic. Unicorn's a psychic. Uh, Rise Heart's a warrior, but it's like, who gives a shit when you can still summon a bunch of things? Makes me wonder if Cash Tier will ever start playing Rivalry, because Shangri La is also a uh, psychic as well. Skill Drain, of course, is always going to be a busted ass card. I mean, hell, we're seeing it being played in Labyrinth, for God's sakes, because Labyrinth just don't give a shit. Like, it's good. These cards are absolutely disgusting. Makes me wonder if we'll ever see them get hit on a ban list. DNA surgery is booty, booty, butt cheeks. Who the fuck out here playing uh, playing DNA surgery? <laughs> like, seriously. Anti-spell is situational. I mean, in, in my playtesting of Cash Tira, I've had people flip over anti-spell on me, and I'm just like, what the fuck? Because that's just so idiotic. But, like, it's a way to beat Cash Tira, because, like, we can't play our birth. We can't play our theosis. And, like... I would say 100% of Cash Tira plays, like, especially if they're going first, they rely on a spell card, whether it be Birth or Terraforming to get to the Ray Soth, which in turn gets them to Unicorn, which can get Theosis, you know, so on and so forth. Or if they're playing the Brave Package, you just lock them the fuck out of their Brave Package, and it's like, bro, I hate it here. <laughs> like, seriously. It's so booty booty butt cheeks. It's so bad. Dark Law. <sighs> I gotta put this in the booty booty butt cheeks category. Like, it, it banishes and, like, if you're the Cash Tira player, like your boy, like, why the fuck do you care? Like, you're gonna draw for turn. The Dark Lord, the, the Dark Lord, the Dark Law is gonna hit, like, what, a Fenrir out of my hand? And I'm gonna go birth and I'm gonna be like, thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and special summon it on out. And I'm gonna go ahead and normal summon a monster. <laughs> like, Dark Law, anything that's banishing that's not named a Rise Heart, I feel like just feels so bad. So, I know that Heroes can do other things. I think that Heroes is a rogue deck. But Dark Law on its own, like, go, uh, seriously, hero players, answer this. Going Dark Law and passing, is that really enough in 2023? Because I feel like it's not, if I'm being quite honest. Um, Mind Drain, uh, this, this is booty booty butt cheeks, ain't nobody playing Mind Drain. Uh, Soul Drain, ain't nobody playing Soul Drain. Uh, it's it, uh, not even situational. Like, these cards, I just feel like have fallen out of favor so hard. Necro Valley, nah, I'm gonna put, yeah, I'll put Necro Valley in decent. Uh, I'll even put it as a side deck card. You know, with Tier Element falling off the face of the earth more than my love life, um, you know, Necro Valley has really fallen out of favor because of that, because it just doesn't do anything to cash Tira, and by extension, it really doesn't do much to other decks in the format. Like, why would you play Necro Valley against Labyrinth? Oh, well, you're gonna stop their Welcome Labyrinth and Big Welcome Labyrinth, okay? Uh, they, they've got Eradicator, Sugar Boo Bear, like, they got a lot of other baby back bullshit. If you worried about Welcome Labyrinth and Big Welcome Labyrinth, yes, those cards are issues, but I mean, like, you could DD Crow those. They got to have a Fiend on the board, too, I think. So, take that for what you will. Um, Zombie World, same thing. I'm going to put it in side deck. I, I, I mean, if you're that worried about Flunder, I guess, but, like, uh, I just I don't see why. It's outside of Flunder, it's just kind of eh. Uh, lose one turn. I'm gonna put it in situational lose one turn i feel like it's kind of similar to the c cards in that it kind of comes in and out of favor but yet we have so many better options now besides lose one turn like i mean like we have goes and rivalry tc boo which those on their own especially with a skill drain i just feel is better than setting up a lose one turn like i just i don't know man just lose one turn feels so bad when you have access to better cards um royal decree so I'm, I'm going to, this is going to be my hot take. This belongs in side deck. This card is disgusting. And I'm honestly really tempted to play it in Cash Tira in my side if I can figure out what the hell to take out. Because the Labyrinth matchup, at least for me playing Adventure Cash Tira, I'm pretty much just using MST TV's build with a couple changes. It, the Labyrinth matchup is so fucking hard. Like when they go first and they set up like even just an Ariadne with like fucking four or five back row is just, not only is it toxic, but it's just so hard to deal with, man. Like, yeah, you can make the argument, we'll just play Lance, but you still got to open up the Lance if you're going second. Whereas Royal Decree, if you're going first, oh my lord, like the deck can't play. They can't Eradicator you. They can't deck W you. They have to have the back row hate. And like, if you're playing Judgments along with this, which that sounds kind of eh, I mean, you can Judgment it and then like, you know, 
then you can flip up the decree afterwards, I guess. But even then, they can't evenly you because you just flip over the decree and tell them to go touch grass. So I, I think it's worth looking into. Um, Secret Village is decent. I, I don't really see anything playing Secret Village. What's going to play Secret Village? Fucking spell books? Sure. Like... You do you, boo-boo. How, how does table 495 feel? <laughs> Probably better than table 500. Um, Summon Limit's a good side deck card. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's good. There's not much else to really say about it. Um, I think that's really it. I mean, there's some other cards in here that... I don't know why the fuck these are in Floodgates. Who the hell is playing Stygian Dirge as a Floodgate? Who the hell is playing Abyss Gaios as a Floodgate? But Plasma, yeah, okay. Gravity Bond, yeah, sure, okay. I mean, I don't know who the hell made this. And if, if you're watching this video and you made this, I, I'm not trying to sound like an asshole, but like <laughs> Terminal World, okay, Terminal World's kind of a floodgate, but it's more like a like a, uh, a turn skip thing. Power Filter's not a fucking floodgate. That's not no floodgate, 2033. Slifer's a floodgate. Yeah, okay. Okay, I, I'm not going to bust this person's balls too much. I don't know who they are. So <laughs> guys, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Is there anything I missed out or is there anything that you see down here that maybe we could consider that isn't a fucking duplicate like this and the band played on thing? Ooh, um, Shifter. I mean, Shifter's a hand trap. That's not a fucking floodgate. What am I saying? Baguska is not a floodgate. So guys, they're, they're good cards, but they're not floodgates in the right of like what we're talking about here. Guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.